To know the names of the systems is also great for now when we're at the PC because now I just type in vector, vanishing point vector, perfect. I get this window and I only get this if my sensors are connected to the PC. Otherwise the software thinks I don't have the license and won't open. But it's good that I get them. And can you remember we have the stereo lab sensor and the Intel, but now we connected the Intel. So let's select this one and here's the software. So this is where the magic happened. This is where the magic happens part one out of three. Let's first, I click connect. And then you can already see in the middle that my sensor, the Intel sensor in real life is a fisheye camera here. That's my arm. And this is a very, very wide lens. And this is the Intel sensor. So we can now go here to the right side to the panel, click on advanced. And um, so here, that's one of the biggest advantages that I'm using the Blackmagic Pocket Camera Cinema 4K over a DSLR. Well, you can see there are some Canon cameras and uh, also some Sony cameras, but usually these are film cameras here. Yeah, so not DSLR or mirrorless cameras. Um, so, and it's great because this is what we were talking about. So where is it? Blackmagic. Okay, it's already selected here at the top. Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. This is exactly the camera I'm using. So this is very important information. For example, when I switch you to another camera to the Blackmagic Urza Mini Pro 4K, this one, for example, you can see film back with 22.52 and film back high 12.66 so this is the preset of course you can measure it but you know what i i love to play the safe route yeah just to select my camera so it's here and it's already set for my camera 18.96 and 10 so they did the job to measure this and maybe you can remember at the beginning of the video when i mounted the sensor onto the camera this is what we were talking about where the sensor is connected now to the camera so then we have something here, focal length, 16.32. Where is this number coming from? Because it's not changing when I'm changing the camera. And this is the calibration. This is the result of my latest calibration. So on the calibration itself, it's very easy. I just click on calibration. I get the message, please di disconnect before changing modes. Okay, let's do this, disconnect. And the calibration is just another mode. Then again, click connect to cameras. I'm getting an error message, cannot connect to capture card. So, and this is probably because my camera is not turned on yet. So I turn on my camera. Let's try this again, connect to cameras. And this time it works, perfect. So my task for now, maybe you can remember this card from the unboxing that came with the Venturing Point system. And also, I think I didn't show this, um, this mount here, this came also with the system. I had it connected here to my stand. I need the stand. So mount this here. And then here on the lower window, you can see the blue square. And this is where I have to align this card now as good as possible. I think it has to be a little lower. Also, once I have it straight, I won't move it again. So I think this is now a nice alignment. I have to make sure that the aperture of my camera is not too wide open because I don't want to have the blur. I need some depth. I'm storing this frame now. So I click store frame one and then the blue, what is it, a rectangle? And then the blue rectangle changes and I have to realign the position of this guy. So I won't make this now here perfect because I have to do this 22 times or so. And sometimes I have to move it much wider and I want to make sure that everything is like in focus. So that's why I want to make sure that the aperture is not wide open, bring it a little closer. We need a lot of depth so that we keep this in focus to do the calibration properly. So after you did this, I'm not sure, 12, 24 times it was like, <laughs> it felt like forever for me because it's not a nice work. But the good news is you only have to do it once. The very end, you have the possibility to save it and to give it a name. So I'm clicking cancel now and reset. Okay, yes, I'm sure because I already did this and I co can go back here to my markerless tracking. I connect my sensor 
and then I click on tools and here in this direction lens profile I select my Intel calibration JSON file so and this is where my calibration data is stored and this is where the real life focal length is also created and stored because this is what the calibration is for now the system really knows where the sensor is exactly connected what lens you're using and you have to do it for each sense and for each sensor you're using once because you just save it here you have your JSON file and then you click my camera is already selected here just click OK and we are ready to go with the vector sensor and can it now open and we are good with the vector sensor now let's have a look at the wiper all I do is I'm searching for wiper the next software is opening so here it is the window is a little smaller and I'm connecting now here at the very top it says track zoom and here this part here is for the focus so let's connect hardware I keep this to zero let's connect it let me go to the camera and see if some a signal is coming in and we can see on the screen the red line there is moving that's a good sign but I only want to see if I get signal and to see how everything works from the beginning let's set reset all click reset all pay attention to this area here where it says sending lens as 24 because when I'm now moving the lens yeah when I'm not now just changing the zoom you can only see that the numbers are changing but we still don't know the real focal length so let's tell the system the focal length so I will set my focal length to 12 that means on the wiper I give it the lens value 12 and click add point now I'm changing my focal length to the max because 12 was my minimum so this is 35 and the software I adjust the lens value to 35 click add point and then create curve great and this is my curve and when I now move my zoom lens down to 12 you can also see that it moves in the wiper software to 12 so that's great so the zoom is calibrated I can also save this curve <laughs> I already did this so this is my zoom one I have two calibrations for another lens okay let's go to the track focus section here below this time the device ID is one I click con um, connect to hardware also click reset all and when you have a look here now you should see that also these values are changing so that's great but now I have a big issue because I mentioned this before so first of all you can see I disconnected my motor here so that I can move this freely with my hand but the issue is this is an infinity focus and it's not only infinity it's also in autofocus so no matter how I change it as soon as I hold my finger here on the display and wait for a second it zooms exactly this part and I didn't change anything here with my focus ring so that's bad because my sensor has no idea about this and of course as a result my software has no idea about this as well in the perfect world it works exactly as it would work for the zoom yeah because we have fixed values here like my 12 by 35 millimeter and it always stays the same in a perfect world you have a lens that has manual focus where this is the same with the focus so the way I am doing this I have this focus chart and I position it around 20 centimeters from away from my sensor then I go to the PC I have here the lens value also in centimeters type in 20 at point oh sorry reset or just 20 not 201 at point and then I'm positioning this focus chart very far away like I try to do this like um, five meter or even longer 
For this demo I stay in my room which is not so huge but sometimes I really open the door and go to the other room. So this is now, oh, this is now 146 centimeter. And now I'm slowly moving my focus ring. And it's very important that it's really slowly because the motor of my Edelkron, yeah, focus controller also moves very slowly. And yeah, it has an impact on the tracking. It has an impact of the focus of my lens here. So I do this very slowly until I get my focus calibration shot in focus. Let's have a look. Now it turns red even more. So that's great. I go to the software, type in 146 at point, create curve. And from now on, I shouldn't move my focus ring fast. I shouldn't touch the autofocus because otherwise my tracking data would be messed up. And for example, I have to do the calibration again and again. Well, I have another way of doing this. This is too much for this video. I'm talking about this in my courses. Again, the links are down in the description. But now have a look at Unreal Engine. So let's open the Epic Games launcher. I'm launching a new Unreal Engine project, so it's fresh. And yes, I always choose games and the third person template because simply I just want to have this character running around my level to see the dimension of my scene. Yeah, so everything fine here is perfect. Let's keep it like vanishing point demo. Sorry, I need the underscore and create project. So now it's a great time to talk about the installation. So obviously I did this before. You already saw the Vector and the Viper software, but there's more about the installation. So this is the content that comes with the Vanishing Point Vector system. And when, I run, when I'm running here this Vanishing Point Vector Excel file, the installer opens and it asks me if I want to make changes. Of course, I give it the direction and it says the folder already exists. Of course it exists. Don't want to create a shortcut. And now I could click install and it would install my software, but not only the software, because this one is a smart installer, it installs more. It installs here my Blackmagic Media Express software. So this is needed and it comes with a decklink card that comes with their sensor. And you can, for example, here always check if you get signal from your camera into the PC before you get into Unreal Engine. So this is why I love to use the Media Express to check if I get signal into my PC. Yes, and since I already did this, we now have here in Unreal Engine, when I click Edit, Plugins, the Vanishing Point plugins here. I have the Vanishing Point category and I have Vanishing Point. I have Vector Live Link. I'm not sure if this is still needed, but I always enable it. Vector Public, okay, and Viper. Of course, I had another installer for this here, Viper Lifelink. This is part of the USB stick that came with the Viper system. So, but we have the Viper here. Okay, let's move on. Now I click here on all at the top to get all plugins and I type in media because here I get some important plugins. First of all, I get the Blackmagic Media Player. I need this one. And I also need the media framework, utilities and media IO framework. So this has nothing to do with the tracking system, but I always enable the movie render queue. Yes, it's still in beta. So, and that's it for our tracking that we need. Restart Unreal Engine to activate the plugins. So it's restarted, close this window. And now you see here at the top, we have this vanishing point menu item. That's great, let's click this. So usually a new window pops up, but because I have my Android engine set up like it is, usually let's close take recorder so that we have more space. I love to keep my Android engine here on the left side. Uh, my vanishing point. And this is now something I call it's a deep integration so that the vanishing point software here connects with Unreal Engine using this deep integration. Why do I call it deep integration? Because there's always Lifelink. 
So we also need to make sure Lifelink is also another plugin. And what most apps do when they're connecting to Unreal Engine, you need to add a source and you had to uh, connect it via Lifelink. But Vector has this deep integration here with this plugin. So this is how I call it. I think you can call it deep integration. And the very first thing what we want to do is click spawn data. And what we're getting then here now on the right side in World Outliner are two things the vanishing point data and vanishing point media bundle. And this is the last step we do in this video because I want to add this video. How I get the picture of my Blackmagic Pocket Camera into Unreal Engine because we already could see that it's here in the PC, in the media capture software and the media express software. So the next step is to bring it into Unreal Engine and this happens here through this vanishing point media bundle. When this is selected, go to the details panel here and here double click this. Make sure to select the settings from your camera. In my case, it's Declan, uh, the Declan card, 1080p progressive and 30 frames per second. Apply, save it, close it. And now I should here click request play media. And this is the sign for Unreal Engine. Bam, now get the signal from the Decklink card from the Blackmagic camera connected to the Decklink card into the PC. And we can check it when we click on vanishing point data. And here it is, great. So data always shows the picture from the camera and this vanishing point data actor is here this camera. No, sorry, it's not this camera, but let me show you. Aha, here this camera. Let's bring it here to this guy. Maybe we, maybe you rotate it. We will see if this was enough in just a second. Because now, and I will make something now really, really quick. We go more into detail in the next video. Um, I click connect. And what I'm doing now here is when I click connect, now Unreal Engine is connecting to my vanishing point software. So, and you can see now this camera here is slightly, slightly moving, but it's also because I'm so, so, so close to it. If I move a little further away, ah, it's still moving. Well, that's too much. It's probably because I have the AC on right now and the camera is moving in real life. We will check this in a second, but what you should know when I click disconnect, this camera here is not moving again. And now let's connect it. And now I'm moving my real life camera and you can see the blue camera is also moving. So that's a great sign. So we will really do all the details in a later video, but to make it very short, because that's a nice ending, um, I just select, um, set the key here, my live green screen, make some adjustments. And then you can already see that we have the, that we have the character here from Unreal Engine and my real life focus chart. And you can see I move my camera and both my focus chart and the character in Unreal Engine is moving, but there are some more tasks to do to really sync this, to really line this. We will set up Genlog, we will connect the wiper system and so on. Well, there are some more things to do, but this part of the next video, and this will definitely be also the most fun video here because we get into all the fun things after all the setup and calibration is done. So thanks so much for watching. If you haven't yet, check the links below in the description for my virtual production classes. And I can't wait to see you in the next video because this will be very, very fun.